So, welcome to my first video in this series that will show you the full construction of my new workshop. This video will cover the first stage of the build, which is the foundations. As you can see in the introduction video, the workshop is to be built on the site of my old kitchen garden. I finally gave up on this plot as the soil is mostly clay and therefore far from ideal for growing vegetables. Any root vegetable failed to produce a crop, even though I spent over 20 years adding as much compost and manure as I could. In addition to that, the area floods in the winter as the clay sits so near the surface. My current workshop belonged to my late father-in-law and it can be seen in some of the other videos I've already uploaded. It's a concrete, prefabricated single garage that leaves no room to reasonably work in without manoeuvring materials and various machines around all the time. As I'm currently wasting lots of valuable time on each woodwork project, I came to the conclusion that I've outgrown this workshop and I need to construct something new and something bigger. The foundations are probably the most important part of the build. I won't go into the detail of how to lay them out and square them up, as there are plenty of professionals out there who have done a better job on YouTube than I could have done. The only thing I will say is that if you have not done this before, then you will certainly learn about the Pythagorean theorem. Obviously, the type of foundation depends on both the type of building you aim to construct and what the building will be built on. Remember, you can build a workshop, summer house, etc. on anything, including water. Also, the tallest building in the world is built on a combination of various types of sand and soft rock. So if you've researched meticulously, you can build on almost anything. As I mentioned before, my build will sit on clay, solid clay. In fact, the clay I'm building on has sat there since the last ice age, so it's not going anywhere. This meant I had to consider the types of foundations available and then make my final decision on which one to use. The type of foundation I decided to use was based on the following, and in no particular order they are, the ease of construction for one person, the type of construction of the workshop building, the soil the building is going to be built on, and of course, cost. Eventually, I decided to go for a combination of concrete pile and slab or segmented trench foundation, however you decide to look at it. As the workshop will have a steel frame, these steel tubes will sit vertically on the concrete foundations. I could see no reason why I needed to pour concrete that was not going to be near the point of contact with the steel legs, hence the use of small slabs or segmented trenches. These foundations will in turn sit on the clay subsoil that's been there for like ever. In fact, to give you an idea of what it's like around my neck of the woods, here's a picture of some roadworks in the neighbouring village. As you can see, the road surface has been laid almost directly onto the clay, with just some ballast sandwiched in between. So the concrete pads, as I will call them, will be approximately 600 by 600 millimetres square, dug down to a depth of 300 mil. In the middle, there will be a hole bored to a depth of 600 mil from the middle of the pad. So the overall height of each foundation will be just shy of one meter. This is manageable for one person to construct themselves at their leisure. The design of the pads will work in the following way. The horizontal surface will resist any sinking as they will press into the surface of the clay. The side of the borehole will resist any sinking as the level of friction of the side wall is quite significant. With the inverted top hat T-shaped design, this will resist any rotation forces. The other benefit of using these pads is that they don't have to all be at the same level. This is because the vertical steel tubes can absorb the minor height differences between the pads. Therefore, this type of foundation can be built on uneven ground or even a slope. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing was to clear the site of any other construction that was going to be in the way. This was my old compost heap, which, with the help of my building inspectors, was quickly removed. The tools I used for construction were as follows. I mentioned these as I'm pretty pleased with one of them and would encourage you to get one. From left to right, they are ground rammer, post hole shovel, garden spade, trench shovel, pointed navy shovel, the must buy, and petrol auger. Oh, and an angle grinder, which isn't shown, and of course, a cement mixer. 
The reason I love the Navi shovel is because of the length of the handle when compared to a normal shovel or spade. If you have a bad back, you get a bad back when using a standard spade or shovel for any length of time, or you just don't want to end up with a bad back, invest in one of these. It's one of the best things I have done. This old codger loves it. Let's kick off by breaking ground. I use a wooden frame template that was aligned to one of the marker posts, which made sure all the pads were in line with each other and built to the correct size. Again, with the help of my chief building inspector, I dug out the shape of the pad and took it down to the desired depth, which is the top of the clay. I then got out my petrol auger and bored a hole as deep as I could. As you can see from this clip, the borehole walls are very rough, which is a good thing as it creates more vertical friction with the concrete. I was lucky enough to find two very large boulders at the bottom of this one, which I decided to leave well alone. From Selco, I purchased some rebar mesh and cut it to slightly less than 300 by 300 mil, so it would drop into the concrete. I collected as many stones as possible during my excavations and then added as many as I could to the base of each hole. These were then rammed in to stop any settling. Adding the rebar mesh into the pad would add the extra strength. I'm sure if I spent more time wiring it all together, the strength would be improved. However, I'm counting on the clay moraine being as solid as you can imagine. A quick pad down and a smooth off and the pad is finished. All done, ready for the steel construction. The following videos in this series will include items such as the steel frame erection, the roof construction, the attachment of the wooden frame, the very important insulation selection and the cladding. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See you soon for the steel frame construction video.